Hey guys, sorry this video is so late, but it's just been a rough day. Um, it's going to go over that packet that I gave you on population ecology practice problems. Some of you are expressing that you are a little confused and you weren't too sure what to do and you needed some help. So what I've decided to do is to work one example of each type of problem that I've given you, and then you can build on that and, and learn how to do the rest on your own. Um, if you're still having trouble after this, then come see me. Now, ironically enough, in all of these problems, you're doing pretty much the same thing. You're either multiplying, dividing, subtracting, or adding. But what's really tripping you up is some of the terminology and some of the variables that you're using, some of those letters like capital B versus lowercase b and, and all that stuff. So hopefully we can lay it out and get it all together and you'll, you should be good from here. <clears throat> so if you look at your packet, let's start with question one. And I'm not going to write out the question. I'm just going to write the important information. So it says that you have 300 blue jays and they're found in, 20 hectare plot, in a 20 hectare plot. What is the density in blue jays per hectare in that plot? Run to the near, round, sorry, to the nearest whole number. So this is straight from your notes over population ecology. So all you're going to do to solve any questions that ask you for density of an organism per a certain area or space is you're going to take, and oh, by the way, I write terribly on this thing, so good luck. You're going to take the number of the or of organisms, however much they give you, and you're going to divide it by the total space of the area that they give you. So in the case of question number one, so this is question number one we're looking at, our total number of organisms were 300 blue jays. And then our total space was 20 hectares. So when you do the math, that equals out to be about 15 j's ooh, per hectare. And that would be your answer. This 15 right here, that's your answer. You're done. Now what happens if they give you um, a two-part space in, in the sense that they say, you know, the space is 6 by 12, or 3 by 4, or 2 by 8. Remember, you're always trying to come up with total space. That's the key word, or the key variable when we're looking at this particular equation, total space. So you would multiply that out to find out what the total space was, and then you would do this part of it where you're taking the number of organisms and dividing it by that total space that you just calculated. So any question that deals with density, this is how you would go about those. All right, now let's look at question three. Oops, sorry, got to switch back to my pen. Okay, so question three. Question three says, suppose the population density of a sample of deer is 50 per square kilometer. Assuming that the population is uniformly distributed, what would the population size be if the deer encompassed an area that was 20 kilometers by 200 kilometers? Round to the nearest whole number. Question three is pretty much question one, but this time, instead of finding how many organisms you're going to have per that area of land, they're asking you to find the total amount of organisms that that particular area can support. So the first thing you need to do is start off by finding the total area. So your total or total space, however you want to think of it. And that's going to be your 20 kilometers times your 200 kilometers, which is going to give you 4,000 kilometers squared. Okay, so that would be your total space. So now you have to think, if I have 50, because they, that's what they tell you in the program, in, in the program, in the problem, sorry. So if there are 50 deer per kilometer squared, and you have 4,000 square kilometers, then it's just going to be 4,000 times 50 to give you a total population of 200,000 deer. And then this would be your answer. It's pretty much the same thing. We just, instead of, instead of finding organisms per a certain area, you're just finding total population. Right now we're looking at question five. 
So question five is a three-part question. So starting with 5a, it says, in a it gives you some general information, then it goes into the questions. So in a population of 600 squirrels, the per capita birth rate in a particular period is 0 0.06, which is a way of representing percent, and the per capita death rate is 0.12. Question A says, or part A says, what is the per capita growth rate of the population rounds to the nearest hundred? So you kind of need a formula, which was in your notes. Rate is abbreviated with by lowercase r. And when we start talking about growth rate, the way we find that is we take the births that that population has experienced, and from that number, we will subtract the deaths. So the formula ends up saying r is equal to little b minus d. And you're using that percentage that they give you or that decimal that they give you. It's pretty much the same thing. So in the case of part A, your b was 0 0.06. That was our birth rate, our birth per capita rate. And our death per capita rate was 0.12. When you work your math, you end up with negative 0.6. That would be your answer. And that negative and positive is important. So if the answer says, if you, if you work it out and it's negative, then make sure you put in that negative sign. So part A. Let's see if I can squeeze part B down here. Part B says, what is the actual number of squirrels that die during this particular period? Round to the nearest whole number. So this is where we have to think about it. Our total population, based on what we were told originally, was 600 squirrels, okay? The death rate, or D, is 0.12. So to find out how many squirrels die, we're gonna take our total population and we're gonna multiply that by our death per capita rate, and that will equal our total number of squirrels that, that died. So total died, is equal to 600, which is the total population, times 0.12. So if we wanted to write out a formula, the formula would be um, total population times D. Okay, and that works out to be 72 squirrels. All right. And there's our answer. There's part A, here's part B. Let's go ahead and look at part C. Part C says, what is the actual number of squirrels that were born during this period? Round to the nearest whole number. So part C is kind of like part B, except this time instead of working with death rate, we're working with the birth rate. So we go back to that total population which is 600 individuals, or 600 squirrels in this, in this um, particular question. And our B, or our birth rate, is equal to 0 0.06. So we're doing the same thing. We're going to take the total population, and we're going to multiply that by our birth per capita rate. So that's going to be, so this is going to work out to be the total number born how many squirrels were born. So it's going to be that 600 times 0 0.06 to give us an answer of 36 squirrels. There we go. Okay, now we're moving along to question 6. And question 6 deals with your ability to calculate per capita death rate, per capita birth rate, and then per capita rate of increase. So it says, in a population of 750 fish, 25 die on a particular day while 12 were born. Part A asks, what is the per capita death rate of the day? Round to the nearest thousandth. So death rate is represented by the symbol lowercase d. So this is death rate. Or per capita death rate. And the way we, the formula for this, or to figure this out says, Lowercase d is equal to capital D divided by n, where capital D is the number di that died that day, 
or I guess we should say the number dead. And N represents our total population. So to work it out with the question, it told us we get 750 fish and 25 died on a particular day. We are trying to come up with the per capita death rate for the day. D is going to be equal to 25 divided by 750, which gives us an answer of 0 0.033. And that's our answer for part A. So this is 6 part A. Six part B wants us to find the per capita death rate. So we're going to do the opposite to what we did in part A. We're using pretty much the same parts and pieces, except this time we are finding B. B represents per capita birth rate. And the formula says b is equal, little b, be sure you realize that this is little b, little b is equal to big b divided by n, where big b takes the place of big d, and it represents the number born, oops, yeah, and n represents, again, total population. So to work this one out using the numbers we were given, it's still 750 fish, and this time 12 were born. So B is going to be equal to 12 divided by 750, which is equal to 0 0.016. And that would be our answer. Part C wants you to calculate the rate. It's the same rate that we calculated in question 5a, but we'll do it one more time just to make sure that everyone gets it. So rate is equal to birth per capita minus death per capita. So r is equal to little b minus little d. And you've, those are the two parts that you just worked out. You worked b out in part b, ironically enough, and you worked D out in part A. So the rate of increase is going to be equal to 0 0.016, because that's what we got for our B value one question ago, minus 0 0.033, which is what we got for our D value, which gives us a rate increase of negative 0 0.017. And here's our answer. Right, from here, we're going to jump to question 8, which is also a parts question. And question 8 talks about survivorship, at least 8a does. So it says, suppose that a cohort of 200 rats in a rat colony born in January. Oh, wait, I read that wrong, sorry. Suppose that of a cohort of 200 rats in a rat colony born in January... 160 are still alive at the start of March, and 120 are still alive at the start of May. What is the survivorship up to the start of March? Round to the nearest 100. So in survivorship, this is going to the formula you will be working with. It says that survivorship... Sorry, I told you I don't write well with this is equal to the number alive divided by the total population. So if we go back to our question, it asks us specifically, what is the survivorship up to the start of March? And in the, the little bit of information, it tells us that 160 of the original 200 are still alive at the start of March. So our survivorship is going to be equal to 160 divided by 200, which is going to give you 0.8, or 0 0.8, however you want to write that. And that would be your answer. Part B asks us to figure out mortality. 
and it wants specifically what is the mortality rate for the beginning of March to the beginning of May, round to the nearest hundreds. So, the way we figure out mortality rate is going to be equal to our deaths divided by the population at the time. That's our formula that we're going to work with. So in this situation, we are looking from the beginning of March to the beginning of May. Based on the information we're given, we're told that 160 are still alive at the start of March and 120 are alive at the start of, of May. So our deaths, or the number of individual deaths between that, those two periods, would be 40. So our deaths are equal to 40. But the formula says that I have to use the population at the time. Well, since we're going from the beginning of March, the population was 160. So that's the population size that we would use. So it's going to be 40 divided by 160, which gives us 0 0.25 as our mortality rate. Part C wants to, well, gives us a survivorship and tells us to figure out how many rats died at a certain period of time. So it says, if the survivorship during May is 0.3, how many rats died during the month of May? Round to the nearest whole number. So the first thing we have to figure out is, since this point three represents the survivorship, we have to figure out how many survived before we can do anything else. And since it's an actual number, that means we're just going to take the rate, which is point three, and we're going to multiply it by the population at that time. And because they specified that we're working during the month of May, in the month of May, we had 120 rats that were alive. So it's 0.3 times 120, which tells us that 36 rats survived or are alive. Okay. But in order for us to figure out how many died, since this is all the rats that are left alive, we have to subtract this 36 number from our total population of 120. So in order to find out the number that died, it's going to be 120, the original population, minus 36, the amount we know are still alive, which will give us 84 rats that died. And that's your answer. Alright guys, so this is where I'm going to stop for tonight. Hopefully you now have enough that you can work through most of these problems. Like I said, if you're still struggling, come see me in, you know, come see me tomorrow afternoon. Come see me in the morning on, um, on Friday. Let's work this out. I'm not going to give you all the answers because then that kind of defeats the purpose. But hopefully this gives you a leg to stand on and you can go from there. Have a wonderful night. See you soon. Bye.